Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and with me today is James Montemagno. Hey, James. How's it going, Robert? Good. James is a developer evangelist with Xamarin, and he's here to talk to us and show us cross-platform mobile development. Yeah, it's awesome. This is, this is <laughs> awesome. And we're actually doing a four-parter. So this is episode one of four episodes that James and I are going to do, focusing on how you can build mobile apps cross-platform with Xamarin, all in Visual Studio, all using C Sharp. It is an excellent story. And we're not just going to rush through it in one episode. We're going to take four episodes to tell it. Yeah, it's hard to tell the whole story in just in a confined 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, spot. I mean, There's we a lot could, to it, but yeah. we want to get deep on it. I, yeah. I think this is a really important story to tell. Um, you know, we're in a world where we see this proliferation of devices. And, you know, I, I as a XAML C Sharp guy, it's pretty straightforward for me to build Windows Phone apps because it's, mm -hmm. it's XAML, it's C Sharp, I can do it in Visual Studio. That's pretty cool. So whether it's a consumer app or a commercial app or a line of business app, I know how to build that in Phone, yep. Windows Phone. And, and then I'm told, oh, well, that's great, but we also need to support iOS. We also need to support Android. And now it's like, oh, snap. <laughs> you know, what are my choices? <laughs> I can learn iOS. Um, you know, the IDE, Xcode's pretty nice, but then I gotta learn Objective C, yeah, which yeah. I don't really want I don't really want to have to learn. Yeah. Um, to build Android apps, no Eclipse, pretty nice IDE, but I don't really want to have to learn Java. Um, which sounds like you guys have a much better option for me, which is stay in Visual Studio, use C sharp. Exactly. Visual Studio, the best IDE, right? Other ones are okay, they work, right? But you know, I've been using Visual Studio since VS6, I think, uh, mm -hmm. and I started in the same way. You know, I started as a Windows Phone developer uh, many years ago. I went to the final PDC up here in Redmond, and then I gave up everything. I used to work in enterprise-level printer software back in Phoenix, and I moved here to become a mobile developer. And I was, I was in that same position, yeah. was that I came to this company, and they're like, we need mobile apps on every platform. Right. And I only use C Sharp. I was a C Sharp developer for the last decade, yes. you know? So when I found Xamarin, I just kind of fell in love, so I think it's a great story to tell to kind of get you in. And yeah, stay in Visual Studio, write and use C Sharp like you know and love, yep. and create apps on every platform, right? So yeah. in the episode one, which is this one, we're going to do an introduction to Xamarin. We're going to build a very simple app. Super simple. A little uh, bit more glorified than Hello World, I okay. promise that, but yeah. Um, and then in the second episode, we'll do more of a deep dive on portable class libraries, mm -hmm. um, which is a very key piece of the puzzle. Yep. Then in the third episode, we're going to do uh, mobile services, Azure Mobile Services. Um, and then in the fourth episode, we'll take an existing .NET app and move that over um, to all three platforms using your tools. Yep, absolutely. So, all right. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do some slides. I, I usually don't like to do slides in this show, uh, and I make two exceptions. One is when my guest comes on with slides, and I didn't know ahead of time, and I don't really feel like slapping them down on air. <laughs> I won't name names. Um, and then the second is when we're doing, you know, basically a series, and it's something that, that people have heard of, but they may not really understand it. So in this case, I'll make an exception. You can start off with a few slides, <laughs> and then we'll go to demo. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not a slides person either, so I completely understand. So. But, we but did, here it makes yeah, a lot of sense. sense. Yeah. So first and foremost, Plus you already yeah. had the slides written. I did you have them did all them written on the, yeah. on the on the .NET Rocks Road Show. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So I think you know the first question a lot of people ask is, well, what is Xamarin, right? Yes. Well, we're a platform for developers or C sharp developers. Allow you to write um, all uh, all your mobile applications on every major platform, all in C sharp and .NET, mm -hmm. right? But what's really important is that it's the native user interface, native performance. And it's really all about sharing that code across all platforms, yeah. right? So it's great that we can write everything in C Sharp, but don't we want to share all that code as well? Right. So now you don't have to learn new languages. You don't have to you know, leave your IDE. Just stay in Visual Studio. We're on VS Toolbox for a reason, right? <laughs> um, but just share all your code. So in a nutshell, it's really what Xamarin is. But I want to take just 30 seconds, for one minute, to talk about so before where you, we're So before yeah. you move forward, yeah. um, Clear up uh, what may be a confusion. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between Mono and Xamarin? Sure. So, well, Mono's been around for a long, long time. It's an uh, open source implementation of the .NET framework. And Xamarin is built on top of that. So a lot of times, uh, Mono has been run on anything from Linux boxes to Windows PCs to Mac, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. 
So what Xamarin is, it's a platform that uses mono runtime and compiler, our, our compiler for Android and iOS, uh, to built on top of mono, compile down into native applications. But this allows you to use everything you love about the .NET framework. You know, just it's an open source implementation. So it's Xamarin tools built on top of that. Okay. And then we're we're active contributors all the time to the mono right. project. So, so you know, huge. I community. went out to you got to Amazon and you search for Xamarin in books. There is a Xamarin book, mm -hmm. uh, but then there's a number of books, uh, mobile development using C Sharp, and they're using Mono. So in, in that case, what's the IDE? What are the tools? If you learned that stuff, is it 100% the same when you, you are in Xamarin? So Xamarin, as, as a tool set, is relatively new, right? Yeah, so well, when we talk about Xamarin, we can't really talk about, um, talk about it without the, the history behind it yeah. with the Mono. So when the products first came out, you're going to see a lot of legacy things because they're actually called Mono Touch right. and Mono for Android. Okay. So even still in some of our DLLs, you'll see Mono Touch or Mono or M M4A A for Mono for Android. Okay. Uh, so a lot of times you'll see a lot of books that were out there because those are you know still very popular and they still apply to some of the core principles of iOS or Android, just cross-platform development. So you'll still see Mono Touch or Mono development or just a lot of times. People will say C-sharp development with Mono, but what they're really yeah. talking about is C-sharp cross-platform development with the Xamarin tool set. Okay. Yeah, so usually that's what they're talking about. Okay, you know? so if yeah. you had those books or you picked those books up now, it's all still totally relevant. Yeah, yeah. Most, most of it. You know, the mobile scape changes so fast. Sure. I mean, even from right. 8 to 8.1, the, the dramatic changes. Um, so everything's moving fast. So, But mm -hmm. some of the core principles for the, you know, count, the foundations of how the OSs work is still pretty much the same. Right. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So if we talk about kind of mobile development approaches, you kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, uh, Robert, just how the strategies that developers are going about, right? And this is like a, a classic example. It's called, we call it the siloed approach because you have these silos here, right? Which means that you're going to be building your application multiple times in multiple IDEs, so either Xcode, Eclipse, or Visual Studio, um, multiple code bases. Oh, this is this is great if you have resources, if you... Well, this is the you know. approach that uh, SkyDrive took, right? Yeah. SkyDrive, uh, which is primarily a service, um, that team decided that they wanted first class, 100% native apps on all three platforms. So they actually take the time to write the iOS and Android and Windows apps 100% natively, 100% on that platform, build it that way, test it that way um, to get, you know, the absolute best, most native uh, experience across all those platforms. So if you have the time, the team, and the resources to do that, you know, you can certainly do that. Yeah, absolutely. But there's obviously some negatives too. I mean, great, you're going to get native performance, native look and feel. It's exactly what you yeah. want out of an app, right? But then you do have multiple teams, multiple testing. Uh, yep. Think about when you're adding a new feature, right? You have to add a new feature. Well, I got now I got to implement it three times to and tie test it to the certain test times. it three yeah. times, right? And regression Can't test it yeah. three times. Three different unit testing yeah. frameworks, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, you find a bug, right? Uh, most of the time, I've written software for a long time. If you're writing on multiple platforms, mm -hmm. it's not just going to be a one platform, right? right. So this is great because if you're writing it all in shared code or a portable class library, you fix it once, run your unit tests, and it's fixed on every single platform. Right? So that's definitely yeah. a big problem with the siloed effect is more time, you know, multiple fragmentation of your code base, and then really that feature creep is a big right. issue. But we hear yeah. all the time from customers that they don't want to have to do that. and no. You know, we've got customers who are already on the other platforms, and we want them to come to Windows Phone, and, mm -hmm. you know, they're reticent to now add a third completely different implementation to the mix. They're already struggling to yeah. do the, the other two. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a big, big problem because, yeah, it's like, how much more do I invest in this product, right? Tell me so, about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. It's sort of our lives. Well, and there's another approach, too, that a lot of companies have taken, which is this, this magic black box approach, which yeah. is... Which is interesting. I'm I'm not a fan. I'm not an HTML JavaScript guy. Never was. I can I can read it. It's just another language I don't want to learn, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times this is kind of this HTML JavaScript stuff goes in, apps kind of come out on some of the platforms, maybe not all the platforms, who knows? A lot of times Windows 8 in general is kind of left behind and but Windows Phone is there. But what's really bad is that you're not really getting the full native look and performance. A lot of right. times it's just running in a web browser, so you have fragmentation on that. Um, 
the developers you kind of get unhappy because you're like, great, now I'm, I'm in this framework. I don't have access to everything. I could have been writing it all in Objective-C and Java. I had access to everything. Right. So it's like, it's great until you actually want to start doing stuff, right? Once you start getting into the bits and as your application grows, you're actually fragmenting. So this big, yeah. big point is really important. Because uh, I have friends that do this all the time. They're web developers. And they're like, you get to this point, you're really just kind of developing for one platform where right. just stuff magically happens. So what that causes is you're not no longer you're not getting that native look um, performance on each platform. You're really just getting one app that happens to look the same right. on the other platform. Or you write maybe. the app as a web app in the first place yep. and just run it in the browser. Yeah. But you know you you're writing an expense report app. How do you add the ability? Your users say, I want to be able to take pictures of receipts yep. on the phone. How do we, how do you do that in a web app? I didn't yeah, you, do that in a web app. I, unless there's a framework. <laughs> so the, frame, the framework might implement that. Might. And it might, yeah. right? It's, yeah. it's not a feature of the browser. Exactly. Whereas it is a feature uh, if you build it as a native app. Yeah. So then uh, I talk about all that. Yeah. Yes. This. You do. And that's the problem is, is that you don't have that full API coverage. Right. So yeah, what happens when a new version comes out, iOS 7 comes out, or new Windows 8 dot whatever is next, right? Yes. <laughs> comes out. Well, you want to have access to that stuff right away. Yep. So it's kind of like these big wrappers. And a lot of times right. it's actually translation at runtime, which you is You also no have fun. to deal with uh, potential complaints about it working better in one browser versus another, which yeah. you know, unfortunately happens. Yeah. So what's unique about Xamarin, obviously, it's not only the C-sharp approach that we've taken, but uh, this, this picture kind of represents it really well, um, which is that you have your shared core library, your business logic, so tying up to web servers, your SQL database, your Azure mobile services, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's all written in C-sharp in one shared library, whether it be uh, project linking or file linking or a portable class library. Shove everything in there, so that's the bulk of your application. Right. And I think of it like that. That's like 80% of my app is, is going to be all this core logic. And then on each platform, iOS, Android, and Windows platforms, whether uh, a phone or, or tablet or PC, you're building out the user interfaces natively mm -hmm. uh, in each of them. So you're going to get the native look and performance of each of them. Uh, but what we've done is that code behind is all in C Sharp. So it's, you know, there's no Java or Objective-C. You know, when you have a button, click, you know, name it button, dot click plus equals, you're good to go, right? Throw yep. in an event handler and delegate, and you're good to go. So we've set that all up for you already. So the framework is not just we're wrapping things. It's we're actually creating these C sharp bindings uh, mm -hmm. for you to develop against. But here you, you are doing a little bit of each, so you can get the native. You could customize for each platform, yeah. right? Because Android apps don't look like Windows Phone apps. You know, oh, I know they don't look like. I love how Windows Phone apps look. You know, and I want that to look that way. So this is the unique approach: is sharing code across all my platforms, tying in the native UI. Yep. Right. So what's really great, I've mentioned obviously, is I love C Sharp. I'm rocking my C Sharp T-shirt almost every day. When your when your closet is half C Sharp T-shirts, <laughs> or you're a happy camper. Uh, so C Sharp and Xamarin, you know, I don't think I really have to say too much about how and why C Sharp is so awesome. Um, obviously, we have tons of developers watching the show, but you know, link support, event handling, delegates, right? right. So all that the key stuff. thing is that you yeah. fully support C Sharp 5.0 yeah. as a language. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's a, a question of what. Uh, how much of the .NET framework is in there, and what other additional libraries you can pull in. Yeah, exactly. Right, OK. Yeah. Exactly. So we start adding all these libraries, so system.net, HTTP, things like that, right? And then there's the actual Android and iOS libraries themselves. Yes. You know, so if you need to interact, you know, those obviously aren't .NET you know, run times right. you know, to interact. But we have those all wrapped in C Sharp style. Right. right? So, that's, so that's the key thing, yeah. that in the iOS and the Android app, um, I mean, I know how to talk to the camera in in phone, yep. right? Um, the the API is there for me. It's it's part of the platform. Uh, it's it's part of the platform. The key point. So in iOS and Android, you also talk to the phone. Um, so you you've wrapped that. I would still probably need to go understand how the I, API works. Mm -hmm. It presumably does pretty much the same things with you know different sets of classes and methods. But you've wrapped it for me so I can write that code in C sharp. So it's just another library. Yeah, there. To learn is that. How well, correct is that statement? Ish, right? Because we don't necessarily wrap them. I mean, ish. We create bindings, right? So okay. when you think about .NET, why it was created, right? Well, you had all these great Win32 APIs. Yes. You create a pinvoke, pinvoke into it. Similar thing is what we do is we take all those Android, iOS APIs, create beautiful C-sharp bindings for them, expose them to developers, right? Okay. Now, if you are learning something with the phone, we do have helper uh, libraries out there. Like mm -hmm. We have a Xamarin.mobile 
which will wrap up Windows Phone, WinRT, um, Android, and iOS. So you, you have one common camera dot take picture, camera dot store right. picture. So we've kind of uh, implemented that on okay. each platform. So it at least gives you a headway. But what's great is no matter where you're reading documentation, Android, Apple, MSDN, you know, any anywhere, you can follow the core principles that are there because we still follow the naming conventions, right? Because right? we don't want to like rewrite the API that's already been written by anyone, mm -hmm. right? So, but have you? Yeah. So have you documented the API? I mean, the API mm -hmm. on the Apple site is written with the idea that you're writing Objective C code. Yeah. So the code samples that they'll provide you are in Objective C. Yep. So you can sort of understand that. Ish, yeah. <laughs> Lots of stars and yeah, brackets. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff you don't understand and, you know, it's, you can understand the method names, but then understanding what parameters you have to pass may wind up being totally different. Yeah. Um, so have you guys documented the APIs in C Sharp? Yeah, absolutely. If when you go to docs.xamarin.com, okay, cool. docs when you click on the developer tab, our docs team is amazing. Okay. Um, I mean, I work with them on a daily basis. And from samples, we have a thing called recipes, which are like hundreds of just samples of anything you can do. If you want to do Bluetooth, NFC, I mean, iBeacons, we have everything there for you. And everything is documented. We have like an actual API like uh, documentation. So, like, if you were to go to MSE on that type, right. then we have physical, like, Android, our introduction of this, like step one, step two, and like it's hundreds and hundreds of pages. Okay, you can cool. find anything in it, to be honest. All right. So obviously there's are some features of C Sharp. Talk about JSON, making it easy, connecting up to web services, right? That's all available mm -hmm. to you. Um, my favorite feature, uh, obviously, in, in C Sharp uh, 5 was async await. It just yep. makes writing code so much prettier, so much more maintainable, yes. right? I go out in this example, I'm going out getting a podcast feed, this is from the .NET Rocks demo. Yep. I go out, I wait for it to get the string, I parse my XML asynchronously, I come back on the UI thread. So it's about that context yep. aware. And that's all in C Sharp and Android now. Right. You know, so all that code that you're writing in async awaitified is good. So the whole point is, yeah, write everything in C Sharp, right? Cool. So you've been writing C Sharp code for Windows for years, right? Uh, if not more. Uh, so now we can extend everything you know about your favorite IDE, Everything about C Sharp, Android and iOS. And now, Mac. if you're a VB developer, you can reuse your VB portable class libraries with a few caveats. There you are. You can't yeah. write the code. You can't. Uh, you don't have VB support to the same extent as C Sharp. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. So, okay. yeah, VB.net. Um, when you're looking at, it, we do have a great uh, in our doc section. We have a great tutorial of how to reuse portable class right. libraries. There's uh, finesse there. Mm -hmm. to it, but it totally okay. works, and we've okay. re rewritten some of our apps that are all in there. Uh, we also have some F-sharp support in there as well. It's more okay. community-driven, but our key focus is that we love C-sharp, so, right. um, you know. But you could you know. use, if you can use the portable class libraries, then you could, uh, which we'll get to in the next episode, but you could do your business logic and your data logic in VB, oh, and yeah. then um, then you'd, you'd do your sort of user interface programming in C-sharp, so you'd need, you. If you were bilingual, then you could you could do both. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Or maybe you just had a favorite VB.net library that you just don't want to rewrite, yeah. right? Yep. So okay. could do that. Cool. So I talked about it a whole lot before, but really, 100% API coverage. You know, anything you want to do, because like I said, we create mm -hmm. those bindings. So I, the statement's really true: is anything that you can do in Objective C or Java, you can do it in C Sharp, in Visual Studio with Xamarin. Cool. So that's important. Um, and you know, when it comes down to it, I think this slide really is important, the native performance aspect of it, right? Because a lot of these other frameworks, if you're building an HTML JavaScript, you know, it kind of lags around. If I, what if I have a list of 10,000 items, right? Yeah. Well, the difference here is that at our compile time, we're using ahead of time AOT compilation for iOS and just-in-time compilation uh, over on Android. When we compile them down, they're compiling into the native binaries for each device, the native applications. So that means we're getting the native controls, the native look and feel, the native performance, because they're native apps, you know? Right. So, yeah. Of course, we have a great track record. Um, you know, this is a big concern on some of the other libraries. So what happens when new versions of stuff come out, right? We're talking about it. Uh, so since iOS 5, we've had same-day support um, for, for all the releases, including iOS 7. So day one, when you know, it was available for market, for people to download iOS 7, you can start submitting apps right away. Okay. And we have a big developer preview ahead of that, too. And same thing with Visual Studio. You know, we launched Visual Studio 2013 support day one, you know, on stage. So, so it's a big thing, not only just the OSs, but also the tool right. sets. So .NET developer is, is used to how code, what happens to code and apps and, and solutions as you move from 
one version of Visual Studio to the next or version of the framework to the next. Um, is the is it similar uh, when the iOS or the Android uh, gets updates? Is there anything I need to be aware of? Well, not r I mean too much. There's usually new APIs. I mean I kind of think mm -hmm. of it when uh, like Windows Phone like seven five went to eight, right? It was like, do you want to upgrade your app and take take advantage mm -hmm. of the new eight features? Well, then move this checkbox down to eight, right? It's okay. very very similar. Uh, there's no real f uh, you know Windows eight to eight dot one. You actually had to convert. You know, right. they actually convert the solution. Right. There's no converting. It's usually in the project properties, and you just say, what am I targeting, uh, 7.0 or 6.0? Okay. What's, what's the track record in, in iOS and Android on uh, deprecating APIs and moving things around in namespaces? Or are they... Well, you know, that's all up to, all up to, <laughs> to, to Google and Apple as far right, as that. Right, but in general, yeah. is it a... Uh, is it, you know... Is it sm relatively smooth? Is it a total free for all? I would say, I would say, like when iOS seven and even six came out, they did deprecate a lot of things uh, okay. in them, and even inside of our IDE, like we'll tell you, like it'll be a squiggly and say this is deprecated, and you should, you know, change it if you're targeting iOS okay. seven, for instance. But a lot of times, like there's just tons of documentation, and we do our due diligence as evangelists to let you know, let developers know, you know, to what's right. going on. We have our blog at blog.xamarin.com, you know, we're writing so iOS. Uh, you have to compile against iOS 7 SDK now. It's a new yes. restriction from them. Yep. It's a big thing. Obviously, you could do it since it came out. You know, it's not a big deal. But you know, letting people know here's why you'd want to do it. Here's the new features. Here's put, also things. Put an to be app in the of. store. You have to build it against iOS 7. Is that correct? Yeah. Now you could still target iOS 6 apps. Yes. You can. You can make it compatible. On, you know, on iOS, it's really not too big of a concern because people upgrade so fast. But right. if you have to for some business case, you can still totally go back. Okay. It's all about just. Building against the new uh, the new uh, SDK. Okay. So yeah. All right. Yeah. So obviously it's great to write everything in C sharp. And now one focus I wanted to show is just um, uh, this is actually an application from Frank Krueger, uh, his SQLite Net. Uh, he's made that library, um, Calca, and this is one of his apps um, called iCircuit. So I just want to show this off because it's all really about code sharing when we get down right. to it. And this is a really heavy duty app. It's real time circuit simulation, design, editing for analog and digital circuits. It's heavy duty. Um, and he has it available on every single platform from iOS, Android, Windows Phone, Windows Store. You mm -hmm. know, and actually, I love the Windows Store version of it. It's fantastic. You should check it out. It's really beautiful. Uh, but what's really great about this is that he's been featured all over the place. But every time he comes out with a new version or updates his code, he comes out with uh, analysis of his development cycle mm -hmm. and says, all right, it's great that I'm writing everything in C Sharp with Xamarin, but what does it come down to when it comes down to the code sharing, right? So we can see here from, uh, he's able to leverage from all the way from 90%, so all this green is his app logic, so his code behind, and red is his actual user interface code. Okay. So all this green from 90% to 70% on iOS is all of his code reuse. That's so huge. he was able to get 70 to 90% code reuse. And then even the other platforms, right? 85, 88, 86. It's astonishing. That is. You that, know? That, that turns this from an intractable problem to very, very doable Yeah. in terms of supporting multiple platforms. Yeah. And I do this with every single one of my uh, apps that I write. Yeah. He has a little analysis file. You just run it. And we'll do that in the uh, next episode where I show it off. Uh, but yeah, it's really fantastic to see. When you click run and it pops up, and you're like, oh, wow, I just you yeah. know, shared 80% of my code, right? Cool. You know, and, and the reason uh, we talked about this a little bit is why they're different. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mostly just because it depends on how much user interface code has to go in. He might have done a lot of more custom controls on iOS compared sure. to Windows Phone, yeah. stuff like that. So, but, yeah. Right. This doesn't necessarily say that you're going to wind up always saving 90% of your code on phone and only 70% on iOS. That's not the way to look at this. Yeah. The way to look at this is that you get gigantic code reuse. Absolutely. Period. Your, your yeah. mileage may vary. This isn't it, this doesn't mean it's three times harder to write the UI in iOS than in phone. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's three times as much in iOS as there is in phone, or twice as much as in RT. So yeah, exactly. The, the key point here is is to look at the size of the green. Exactly, size of the green. That's important, right. you know. And then the important part is he's on five platforms, right? Yeah. He's he's supporting thousands and thousands of devices, right? Right. So what happens when he finds a bug in his core library, right? And I'll just pu push out a new app update yep. and it's fixed on everything. So. Cool. All right, that's enough slides. I went a little bit longer than right. I think we wanted, but let's that's demo. Okay. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and 
see if uh, you jump have to over go to into display. power point and hit escape. Oh, I like That's that. That's the key. That's the key. That's the only downside to presenter mode. I love I love the new presenter mode. It's so fantastic. I mean, I was using 2010 for so long, and when uh, this one came out, I was like, oh wow, it's so good. All right, so like I said, this. This app's not going to revolutionize the world when it comes to app development, but I really want to just go in, show you Visual Studio, show our integration, and show what you get out of the box. Uh, so I'm going to go in, and this is just a blank solution. Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing special, right? Uh, so now when I go in and create a new project, like I've always done you know, thousands of times, uh, we're presented with a few new templates here. And I can zoom in and Hansel Minute it here for you. Uh, and what I'm seeing Zoom here, and, and Hansel minute? that's Han a verb now. Great. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can trademark his name, but every time I say it, I, someone's like, okay. "You turn it." Yeah, you can use that. Feel free. Hansel minute here for you. Uh, now we can see we have some new. I don't have to pay royalty. Yeah, I know. Ooh. Uh, so we have some new project templates, right? iOS and Android. And you got these how? What did you install to get this? I went to xamarin.com/download. Mm -hmm. I started either my free trial or you know I bought the product. Uh, and when I install it, it installs Visual Studio extensions, our okay. toolkit, everything like so this that. Is, this is an extension that adds these, adds this capability yep. for you. Yeah, okay. and obviously not just this, but obviously all the development right. in general, right? Yeah. So when I go in, and we'll create, we're going to start with an Android application, and we'll bring it over to the other platforms. I'm going to so yeah. To explain briefly the difference: Android application, Honeycomb, Ice Cream, Sandwich. Yeah, OpenGL and, and, and Class Library. So. When you're going through here, uh, Android has a lot of different versions. It's very fragmented. Mm -hmm. you know, it, there's a lot going on. Um, it's gotten a lot better as of recent. So what these are referring to is the actual lowest uh, version of Android it'll run on. Okay. So we can see here we see uh, Android level 12, Android okay. level 15. Uh, and then so these, this is just yeah. equivalent to? Do I want a 7.5 or an 8.0? 7.1, 7.5, 8, whatever the next version is yep. called. Okay. Exactly. Now there's and then other if ones. If you choose yeah. Android, where does that start off? The, the top one. The top one that'll go all the way back, I think, to I don't know, one point six or something. Oh, like, okay. Way way back. Okay. I never really started that. Ice cream sandwich now covers eighty plus percent of the market. And this allows you to take advantage of tons of new features that are okay. available without adding uh, support libraries. All right. There's other things in there, like a class library. So if I just want to create a class library, like I've always done. Yeah. You also have Java bindings, so you can actually take your Java jar files convert them to C Sharp, and create bindings for them. Got it. So we're going to go okay. in here, create a brand new app. We'll call this called clicker.android. Now, when I tried this yesterday, I mm -hmm. actually built my first Android app using your tools. And I called it <laughs> customers.android. Yes. And then I got a, a namespace collision, because it was looking for android.views.view. Yeah. And it got confused because the namespace it was in was customers.android. And you just did clicker.android. <laughs> I think some of the I know I'm going to hijack the show yeah. for, no, for a fine. minute and a half to do my own personal debugging here. <laughs> but talk to me about that. Yeah, so it, it's like any namespace issue, right, that you might run into. Um, obviously, a lot of things are starting with Android. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, and if you're actually trying to reference anything in the Android dot namespace, it'll get confused because it wants you to do clicker dot Android and when it compiles down. Uh, so for demo purposes, I always start with dot Android. If, okay. And I can uh, kind of solve that. You can always solve that by doing global colon colon, and that's kind of gross, obviously. So you wouldn't want to do that. So you, you know, you could simply solve that by not putting the dot and just say clicker Android. Yeah. You could do clicker.droid, but I'm sure you have to pay some royalties to somebody for droid, um, <laughs> right? Uh, but you know, uh, it usually should work out of the box. There are some okay. nuances. So I always say um, no, no dot, maybe right. dot, doesn't matter. OK. Yeah. And the compiler will tell you, right? <laughs> and then hopefully IntelliSense will fix it up. All right. So when I created a, a brand new application here, well, let's, see, let's take a look and see what it brought in. And mostly it's over here in the, the resources files. So if I zoom in, uh, what I can see is that it's an Android application. Yep. So if you actually look at the Android documentation, you have this resource file folder. And inside there are drawables, which are your assets, icons, images, things like that. Layouts, uh, which are going to be an Android XML file. So not XAML. Like swap some things in there. But similar. It's an XML-based mm -hmm. language, yep. just without any data binding. So halfway there. 
Right. It's very, uh, everything in Android has no context of itself, really, so you have to tell it. Uh, and then you have values. So values would be like your resources, or resource strings, for instance. Okay. You could put integers and different files and different numbers in there. So that's the, the key that was brought in there. If I drop this down, uh, we can see that I have a simple layout. I'm so going to open AXML. that up. AXML. AXML. Android XML. Android XML. Yep. It's not Android Extensible Markup Language? It is not, no. Okay. <laughs> it's Android XML. All right, fair enough. Yeah. So, it's always good to know what, what the extensions stand for. Yeah. Right? So Most and, people don't Android. know what XAML stands for. Yeah. So Android XML, very simple. Okay. Uh, and, and when you install Xamarin, you not only just get the ability to create Android and iOS applications, we have a world-class Android designer right inside of Visual Studio built uh, from Xamarin. You can toggle here. So on the bottom, we have design and then source. So here's what that Android XML ah, looks like. Okay. Right? So I'm toggling between them, and you have a linear layout, which is like a stack panel, basically. And then you have a button. And this is, this is if you were creating it in Java, or let's say you were converting a Java project over to C Sharp because you wanted to target more platforms, everything in your resource folder, drag and drop them over into Visual Studio. Okay. Completely reusable. Uh, and then what it does here is you're referencing a hello. So this is actually in my values folder. So if I pull that up, I have a hello string in here, very similar yeah. to a ResX file. Um, that's going on there. But what's great here is I have a full toolbox, just like you would expect. I could come in. Ooh. I could add uh, text in here, drag some text in here, and say, right? Mm -hmm. Edit some text. Maybe I want to put in uh, some uh, another button in here, drag and drop that over. And again, what's going to happen in the code behind is it just generates all that Android XML for me. Uh -huh. I could go in, uh, and I could customize a lot of this, too. So not only could I double click like I saw there, but I have a full property uh, window available to me over here. So this is every single property that's on this button, and there's like a gajillion of them. So I could come in here, and I could actually see, like, here's my ID that's set. I could see the, the width and height. Mm -hmm. So we can see the layout width is actually full. So I could say, I could say wrap content, and that'll make it smaller, oh, right? Okay. So uh, we can change that back up to match parent, so it fills it all the way up. Just kind of the different attributes like you're used to maybe with a stack panel or different properties. Mm -hmm. But that's everything available to you, so you go in and customize your UI, right? So, so that's pretty great. But not, not only do I have a toolbox, I have a designer that's in here. I'm going to delete some of this out. So, that's, that's so then if you double-clicked on that button, would it have created the click event handler? It doesn't quite do that. Okay. Yeah. It'll just do the text. Got it. Yeah. Because what happens is that, again, it's fragmented. I, don't, it's tired. I like to say decoupled. I don't like to say fragmented. That's a bad word in Android Fragmented has a negative connotation. Can, yeah, so it's decoupled. Yes. Let's say that. So what happens is, if I go back over here, is we saw that this was under resources, layout, uh, main. Yep. Right? So everything in Android is called an activity. There's also fragments as well. We're not going to get into those. But an activity is like a page, right? So over in Android land, I have an activity, which is my main page. I tell it to inflate my resource.layout.main. Okay. So I have to tell it what to do. It's code behind, but decoupled. And then I actually have to find the button. Okay. So here I am. I'm finding the button. You know, uh, Resharper tells me I could probably use var there. That's great. So right, I'm using all the tools that I've known and loved. And I can go in here and you know, look at my button.click that's in here, and even set a breakpoint, right? Okay. So this is great. So I just have a simple delegate. And this is the default project, right? So we're going to imagine there's a little count up here, and it's going to keep incrementing, and we're good to go. Uh, so, so that's just Android out of the box. But of course, we have some really great toolbar integration here as well. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing here is that I actually have my Android phone plugged in, which is sitting here. And there's a list of not only my devices that are plugged in, but any emulators that I have as well that I could fire up. So Google Galaxy Nexus is this phone? It's that phone. OK. Yep. And you can name them and whatever you want as well. So then these are all lists of all the emulators. And I'm doing physical device because I always do Android development. So what are all those physical. emulators? So this guy, out of the box, you'll have a lot of mono for Android, just different levels of API. Uh, so here we can see this is 14, so 12, ice cream, you 10. created an ice cream sandwich app. So if you didn't have an actual phone, mm -hmm. which emulator would you choose? I would have gone down to one of the custom ones that I've created. Uh, which is like this Nexus 5, which is set to a higher API. So there's multiple emulators. There's ARM emulators and then x86 emulators. Okay. So x uh, ARM is really slow because it has to emulate ARM 
at the same time of doing all this. It's slow just in general. And this is just has nothing to do with Xamarin. That's just how Android emulators work. If you talk to anyone that's done any Android development, they hate the emulator. Um, well, but, the product yeah. when you when you run the app, it says the emulator, the Google emulators are so. slow. Are you sure you want to run the project? Mm -hmm. so yeah, it warrant. does tell you. It does. It gets very upset at you. Um, but there's also x86 emulators, uh, which use like your hardware. So are these yeah. built-in mono ones ARM emulators? Those ones are ARM out of the okay. box. So what happens is if I go into there's an AVD manager, Android Virtual Device. Right. So inside of here, you can actually create new ones. Okay. And we see that I'm actually created a few of these that are x86 emulators. Oh. There's some finesse, though, because with x86, uh, the, the Intel um, driver doesn't play nice with Hyper-V. So you'd have to kind of switch. So for this demo, we're going to show some Hyper-V stuff because the Windows Phone emulator is so super mm -hmm. s slick. Uh, but I have another way of kind of demoing it here. But this is where it's managed at. Okay. And we have documentation kind and of showing that, that off. That, just to go back to that for a second. The AVD guy or the? Yeah, do it in the, AV, in the AVD. So this is, a, this, is a, this is a Google SDK. Uh, so it tells process. you what version of Android. So when you created yep. the ice cream app, was that ice cream sandwich app, was that targeted at 4 or 3? It's targeted at 4.0 so with API level 15. 15, OK. So yeah. then you would. So does that mean you can run this emulator or not? I could run this emulator. I'd probably run, run one of the other ones that's higher. So it wouldn't run and compile on a 15. I could go in and edit it and actually change this to. Oh, there. Okay. So there's actually multiple levels of 4.0, 4.0 and 15. Uh, yep. okay. And almost everyone's on 15. So right. but you can okay. go in and edit that. I see. Now, of course, you can edit those later. Just because I created the project, I could go into my properties. And here we can see. Um, a lot of different things. We have our okay. custom, we can see what I'm targeting minimum level yeah. to it as well. So I can go back and customize that okay. later. So let's say I started over on a newer ice cream sandwich project, but oh, I have a business case, I need to target this specific okay. device, right? So as a newbie, that's, that's one, of the, one of the first things you need to do is to, to play around with the different emulators and then mm -hmm. get out of ARM mode because it's yeah. unbelievably slow. Yeah, it's unbelievably <laughs> slow, yeah. And I have a nice blog post on my um, blog, Mott's Codes, that I flashed in the beginning. Yeah. It talks about how, how to play nice between the Windows Phone and the uh, x86 mm -hmm. emulator on 8.1 specifically, because there's some new drivers that came out. Right. So it's a great blog to read, I'm sure. The other, the other bang in, tip yeah. I would give to, to newbies is to understand what the emulator is doing. Because um, I think I built, I built, I just built a brand new Android app, and I based it on an Android app, not the ice yeah. cream sandwich. And then I pressed run, yeah. and the emulator came up, but it was at the start screen. And it mm -hmm. wasn't clear what was going on. It turns out that you basically have to swipe to unlock it, and then there's your app. Yeah. So I thought it wasn't working. Oh, when in yeah. fact, the emulators, they're like, you going to do anything? Dang. Did you just start me up for no reasons? You could stare at me and, and start getting impatient? Yeah. When in fact, the app was up and running. I just had to unlock the quote unquote Put phone, phone, which the Windows Phone emulator doesn't do. Yeah. So um, that's also a, a tip and trick. Tip and trick, yeah. The that's good. To understand yeah. what the emulator is doing. And, uh, it's like a real, real if device. If it turns out to be yeah. user error, I yeah. thought it wasn't working. No, I would say like, out of the box, uh, on, even on any Android development, it's always tricky just to get that emulator. Like, wow, why is it so slow? Yeah. Or, like, how do I, you know, why is it doing stuff? So, And I don't have so. an Android phone, mm -hmm. so. Um, I don't understand how those work. The emulator emulates the phone. So if you don't know how the phone. phone works, then you're not going to be as well versed in how the emulator works. Exactly. Yeah. So it yeah. um, might be a good idea to, to, if you're going to do this, go out and buy a phone, not necessarily with a data plan or anything, just yeah. understand how the phone works in the first place. True. There's a, there's a lot that you can buy off contract now, like uh, Motorola has a Moto G, which is $100 at Best Buy yeah. off contract. Yeah, it's smooth. It's got quad core processor. It's pretty pretty smoking uh, for development as the latest stuff. So yeah. So now we have our app, right? And before we refactor any of this code, let's just see what this looks like. Okay. And just hit start debugging, right? And I have a little screen mirroring app. Ooh, let's see if we can reconnect here. Should probably try to reconnect. And this uh, because you're and you're using this because you have deployed to your phone, not the emulator. Yeah. Got yeah. It. So I've deployed to my phone. So here we go. And this is a nice little just screen mirroring app. So here's yeah, our app. It's fast. It's pretty fast, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this is a two-year-old phone, two-year-old plus phone. Okay. So it's not even smoking. Uh, but here I have a nice little Hello World Click Me. 
So when I click it, we should see we hit our very first breakpoint. Right? I can go in, cool. drop down, I have a full call stack, I have my locals, I could look at every single property that's available on this button, I could see yep. where's my count at, and I can continue on, right? And now it's updated to one click, which is not correct English, I don't think. One clicks? One clicks. Two clicks, that's better, right? So now we're just debugging like we normally did. Yeah. That's pretty cool. But what I really wanted to show off is if I was to create this app now on the other platforms, well, how would I reuse some of this code? Even if it's as simple as maybe customizing the string and keeping track of the count. So what I'm going to do is go in and create a new, uh, a new class and call this clicker view model. I've always used an MVVM style. I know mm -hmm. you're partial to MVVM. Oh, this yeah. isn't going to implement like notify property change, which you could, or anything like that. Uh, there is no data binding on Android iOS, uh, but you could do all that stuff, and we show that off in our PCL in the next episode. I'm going to create this very simple app, or a very simple class, and let's go ahead and take over my count. Put that guy in here, and let's go ahead and take out this string format, right? And put it in here too. So let's create a new method. And return. It's going to return a string and say increment count. That's correct. Is that right? So I could just return that, right? Okay. But let's do something fancier. Uh, let's do, I'm going to set this at zero and increment it first, because I like that better. Let's do something that says, if count is greater than 20, let's return VS Toolbox rocks. You know, we can do if count is 10, we'll say return almost there, right? Okay. Simple game, right? Else we'll just go ahead and put in the count there, and let's make this a little bit better, <laughs> right? So now we have a nice little method incrementing the count, yep. you're good to go. Now in my activity, I'll just do a private clicker view model, call that view model. I'm just going to new it up here. Now all I have to do is I'll still have my, my delegate in there, but I'll just say increment count. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Ah, I think I lost my phone. Let's see if I can Let's see if I can get this guy back. A few little USB issues, I think. Let's see here. After five failed tries, it's unavailable yeah. for five minutes. Is that what it said? Yeah. Classic. Yeah, so this is this is like a little app that you can download for free. I'm gonna go ahead and see if this guy will repopulate. The only, the only issue with this little reflector app is it really plays with the Android services that's displaying inside of Visual, Stool, inside of Visual Stool, Studio. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to um, close it out or run a little command line. But in your normal day-to-day, -day, you're not actually screen mirroring the application to yourself. Uh, so it's usually not a big issue. So let's see what this looks like here. I think my USB wasn't plugged in all the way. Or get a better USB, I guess. OK. so. There we go. Yeah, Perfect. So now that we're loaded up, let's go ahead and start debugging on this guy now. And even on that very first run, so I already have this kind of set up and already installed. And it'll install some things, so that first run mm -hmm. actually takes a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, so that's also a new quick tip that the first run takes a little bit longer than the other ones won't. So now if I click it, I should be able to walk in, step into this guy walk through my count, right? Yep. Returning that string to me. Now I'm good to go. Let's go ahead and remove that breakpoint. Sit up here and just click away. Almost there. VS cool. Toolbox rocks, right? All right. Cool. So now we have a nice little nice little helper method and we're good to go, right? So now 
While this is very simple, you can see we can start building things out. This application gets really intense because you love clicking in buttons. I don't know. Uh, but let's go ahead and put this guy on iOS. And then we'll add it over to Windows Phone too. So I'd create a new project if I wanted to. I could go in, go into my iPhone, and uh, create a new project in here. I've already set one up for us ahead of time. So I'll go ahead and say existing project. I have clicker.ios. Now the unfortunate thing about this is that in order to build this, you actually need a Mac machine on your network or connected to your computer, which does the actual building for you. Yeah, correct. So you can compile inside of Visual Studio just fine, not connected. Uh, but Apple requires that you have an, a physical uh, Mac to build against. Right. Uh, it's just in their terms of agreements. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't get really uh, rid of that at, at all. Uh, but you still have to compile to make sure that your code's compiling just fine. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, when you're debugging, you can debug on a device that's connected to that machine or uh, one of the simulators on that machine. Okay. So you can do a few things. But so over in iOS, so now I have my Android and my iOS projects instead of Visual Studio. And over in, in, over in iOS land, everything is tied to UI kit because that's what uh, iOS apps are built against. So instead of an activity or a page, we have a UI view controller. And inside of here, I'm actually going to just create some interface in the, in the code behind. I tell it where to place it on the screen. And again, yeah. the key point here is that, that right here, you're doing, you're doing your UI in C sharp? In C sharp. Entirely in C sharp? Entirely in C sharp, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, so there, yeah. in the Android, you were able to design it in Visual Studio. You could have mm -hmm. just edited the XML, but you also have a visual designer. Yep. Here, you don't have the visual designer. Yeah. Um, you are doing the UI in C Sharp. Now, if you had the Mac and, and there's Xamarin Studio, which is a separate IDE that you can install on the Mac, so you could do the UI on the Mac in Xamarin Studio and then import that into here? Yeah, correct. You could use your TFS or, or whatever okay. to synchronize your code back okay. and forth. Uh, so yeah, right inside of uh, Xamarin Studio and Xcode, it's integrated with their tools. And we do have a full storyboard designer coming soon. Okay. So you can actually edit all this inside to, of Visual Studio. To Visual Studio, exactly. you have a storyboard designer coming soon. Exactly. Ooh, yes. I that is coming soon. Follow up episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good yeah. So that's definitely coming back yeah. to do that. Yes. So that's coming soon. That'll so that'll be episode yeah. five. Episode five, <laughs> yeah. So what we can see here is that it's a very, very similar application. Now, instead of button.click, the actual iOS representation of .click is touch up inside. Just what they call it. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why. But the very first thing we'll want to do is update this method. So what I'm going to... they're Apple. Yeah, because they're Apple and they want to be different, right? Um, so what I'm going to do here, instead of creating a new file, I'm going to bring in an existing item. And I'm going to go ahead and find this uh, Android clicker view model. Now, that little, this little guy here, that little drop down, Instead of adding that file, I'm going to add it as link. Okay. Uh, people don't know what adding as link is. Hopefully, they do. It's it's not going to make a physical copy of the file. It's going to add a reference, basically, to that file in there. So, so pre-portable yeah. class libraries, this is how you shared. So up exactly. In, this is what you would do before last fall when we, meaning us together, yeah. made it doable uh, to share the portable class libraries across all platforms. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So here we can add a link. And we can see they have a different icon here, mm -hmm. a little uh, link icon. So now when I open this up, it'll actually tell me that it's already open, because it's open by Android. But if I modify this here, it'll be reflected in both my Android and my iOS application. So wherever it's linked. All right. So then what we can do is where we're setting this title, I can simply create a new view model up top. So we'll create that Let's see, private clicker view model. Bring that in. All right. So then we can go in here, replace the string dot format with click uh, view model dot increment count. Mm -hmm. Then what you'll also see, I'm going to select iPhone here. If I zoom in up top here, if that works well. I'm actually connected to my Mac. We can see I've selected a debug on an iPhone, and I have my iPhone connected. This tells me my status. I can get logs. I can get different things like that on there. So I, I get that instant notification just like I got on uh, Android as well. Mm -hmm. and if I select simulator, it'll pop down a list of all the simulators that are running on my Mac. But we want to go ahead and do this on the iPhone. And hopefully, 
and get the little screen mirroring app to work. Can you also use any of the third-party iPhone emulators? So there's not really iPhone third-party uh, that I've seen. I mean, you're going to be using the ones that are built into your Mac. Okay. Yeah, so like the, when you install Xcode and the tool set and everything like that, there's going to be some built in. Okay. So you could develop on that. Now with Android, there are some third-party ones, like Jenny Motion is, is one as well, and the different ones like that that you can use. So here we go. I'm just mirroring so the actual iPhone is plugged in here. Okay. So now we should be able to go in, compile this guy. So this will go out like we were talking about. It goes out, compiles up the application, starts a debug session over on the iPhone. Here we go. So that's happening on the on, on the, the Mac. On the Mac, which is then sending it over to the iPhone. Yeah. And then you're using a mirroring tool to display it back in Windows. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so here I am. Again, simple hello okay. world, click me. Oh, I got to click it actually on here. So when I click it, again I'm getting my breakpoints. Yep. Can walk in and out, just like we've seen before. You could go ahead and click, 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 click. Mm -hmm. There we go. Right? And I can cool. keep clicking until I get to, to VS Toolbox Rocks. Cool, right? Yeah. So not bad. It's a very, very, very simple button on a page, but hey. Not just, bad. That's not bad, right? Tremendous. Pretty cool. Think about how long, if you started from scratch, mm -hmm. how long would it take you to get to this point? Yeah. Not half an hour. Yeah, not half an hour. And all I did really for this, I, this iPhone um, pre-built app was I literally said file new, and I just changed a few colors here. Yeah. That's, all I, that's all I really did, right? So, and then the last thing we want to do is obviously take this over to Windows World, right? So let's go ahead and do the same thing, but on Windows Phone. So here I do have a Windows Phone project because I created the UI ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and open up main.xaml. Uh, so pretty similar. There's a button, clicker, click, click, and that's it. Yep. If we look down at our XAML, it's a little bit prettier on this side because I have uh, some alignments. I named it clicker button, and then I set up the click event. And right now, again, this isn't tied up to anything in my code behind. Right. So let's go ahead and implement that. Again, the very first thing we'll do is set that as my startup project, add an existing item. Now, I am, I am going to the Android project. Of course, you could have like a, just your own like, you know, library that you're linking, right. so it's easier project linking. And obviously, it doesn't matter since it's just C-sharp code. It doesn't matter which whether you start that in phone or iOS and bring to the other two because exactly. it's all the same code. Exactly. I could have started this entire thing over on Windows Phone and yep. done the same thing. So now I could go in, say private clicker view model. Then I'm going to do is this guy's called clicker button dot text. So was it content equals view model that increment count. Our nifty uh, Windows Phone 8 simulator. So UI, again. Cool. Again, it's, it's going through and debugging the same code. I yep. can modify these values. Like, that's what's important. I get full call stack on every single platform. You know, I have code lens up here so I can see the references that are taking place, you know, in all of them. So let's go ahead and do the same exact thing. Click, 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 click. Fantastic. There, I'm good to go. Right? Fantastic. So a nice simple demo, but right there, I have some reusable code on every single platform, just tying it up in the UI. Just a few, just a few lines of code. That is awesome. Yeah. Cool. So what we've seen is that by using the, the Xamarin extension, uh, plugs into Visual Studio, um, there's a trial, I believe MSDN subscribers get a discount on it, and then of course you can buy it for real. Mm -hmm. um, you now have the ability to build and uh, debug and create iOS apps, Android apps, Windows Phone apps, sharing all in Visual Studio and C Sharp, sharing huge amounts of code across as we saw. Uh, this episode we linked, next episode we'll use portable class libraries, and this takes a gigantic chunk out of the, the cost and time it takes to get started. You don't 
have to learn um, Objective C and the Xcode edi editor. You don't have to learn Java and the Eclipse editor. You obviously need to understand the platforms you're building on. Yeah. You obviously need to understand more about how you do the UI. You can't just kind of, you know, you're going to have to learn the UI models and, and how those things work, the a the APIs to do things like talk to the phone and yeah. um, talk to the accelerometer and stuff like that. But you've just now taken your existing Visual Studio and C Sharp skills and you've at least gotten to the point where you've got three versions of a Hello World app uh, or a Click app sharing code and you did it in a handful of minutes. This yep. is just awesome stuff. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's all about using the tools and knowledge you've, you know, love for years. I love ReSharper, yeah. I love Visual Studio. You know, I just found CodeLens and integrating everything up to Visual Studio Online. I mean, it's fantastic. So take everything that you love and now target every platform. Great. Right? Yeah. So this has been a, a good introduction to Xamarin. Um, again, this is part one of a four part. In the next episode, we will do portable class libraries. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to do Azure Mobile Services. Then we're going to take an existing .NET app and move it over to Android and iOS. And, and Windows Phone, yep. And Windows Phone, OK. And then later on, you're going to come back and, and show me that. Show you some cool other stuff once <laughs> that, it's uh, out. Yeah, once yeah. it's out. All right. Yeah. So hope you enjoyed that. And we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.